It's time for Washington Fish Side Quest. This episode, Cutting Room Floor Theater. Greetings, friends. Blake here, and welcome to Cutting Room Floor Theater. I was going to do a whole masterpiece theater knockoff thing. However, the music was really, really expensive. So here we are. <laughs> and speaking of here we are, it's December. I'm not fishing as much as I'd like because, you know, it's the holiday season, get ready for Christmas and New Year's and all that good stuff. So, instead, for you, I have two fishing videos that did not make it to YouTube for two separate reasons, aka made the cutting room floor. So, every year I clean out my external hard drive here so I can keep using it and not have to buy another one. And there's always some videos that I don't want to get rid of because I'm like, ah, oh, there's something there. So, uh, my first of the two tales today, I'm going to take you all the way to the northeast corner of the state, uh, Stevens County in the Colville National Forest to Lake Gillette, or Gillette Lake, I call it both in the video. I think it's actually Gillette Lake. I tend to call it Lake Gillette though. At any rate, I traveled over there to go ice fishing a couple years back. Geez, might be four years back, five years back by now. Uh, however, unfortunately my cameras died when I was out there. I had one camera not function at all and one that ran out of juice. However, I did get a fish before the cameras died. Up until then I thought the episode was okay. So let's go check that out right now. Lake Gillette campground almost. Definitely would not be going anywhere without my chains. This is some deep snow. All right, well I'm here and right now I got the whole place to myself. It is just a uh, paradise out here right now. I cannot believe how nice it is. Already one of those trips where even if I don't uh, catch anything, totally worth it driving eight miles across the state to uh, Come hit up old Lake Gillette. Holy smokes. Now Gillette's a pretty small lake. I think it's 30 something acres, but it's very deep. It gets to 70 feet in the middle. Those lakes are always really interesting to me. Uh. Woo wee, all right. So there is about 14 inches of ice. However, only about five of it's any good. Only about five of it, some pretty decent clear ice, I'm surprised how good it looked. And then uh, above that, there is a little pocket of slushy water. Then above that, there is about, oh, what did I say, 14 inches? So I guess about nine, oh, maybe eight. Eight inches of just kind of slush ice that you uh, break through every time you walk. So, whew, wish I would have brought my uh, mucking boots, you know, my rubber boots versus just my, uh, I got, I'm wearing a pair of Keens, you know, which are waterproof, but... Uh, not after you step in slush uh, <laughs> a thousand times. Yeah, that first fish came maybe only uh, 15 to 20 feet below the hole. And again, about 48 feet deep of water. Hit very well. I have two pulls. This one doesn't have a strike indicator on it. The other one does. I could put it on this one, but it hit so well. Didn't need it. Well, I've got my two pull. I might as well put a dead stick in the water. Maybe put something really small on that. I got these new uh, tungsten jigs that are uh, pretty good. See if anything can swing by and slurp it up. Oh, dead stick! got a nice rainbow there you go back in he goes and that as they say was that one of my cameras got no footage and the other one only got that amount of footage I ended up catching a lot of fish that day about 12 rainbows if I if I remember correctly I was hoping to get into a tiger trout which I did not the, the lake there also has tigers in it However, the rainbows were hyper-aggressive. I caught them in anywhere from 5 feet to, I don't know, maybe 30 feet of water. And they were actually nailing this, this, this little perch imitator Rapala here, 
I think it might have been a, it might have been this lure, but it might have been a size smaller too. I couldn't believe it though. Those little 10, 11 inch stalkers were just whacking this lure for a, you know, for what I was hoping, a much bigger fish. And they were hitting the dead stick as well, which just had a tungsten jig tipped with a maggot on it. So that was a great trip. I'd really highly recommend Gillette Lake if you ever get the chance to get over there. Small but deep lake, just beautiful out there. So for our second tale, I'm going to take you all the way across the state near the town of Shelton. Uh, about seven hours away from our last location. So this is Island Lake and this was Russell and I going out just last spring. I thought that it was a uh, either I had a speed limit on the lake or it was non-motorized or something like that. So I just brought the little dinghy with some oars. And you can see here in the video how correct I was. Sunset, we got about an hour maybe. The island is under restoration. Please tread lightly. Stay off of island. Stay off the island to allow plants time to grow. You shall be for recreational purposes only. It's a little confusing. I think it's okay though because there's these trails. Oh, all right, here's a better sign. It says either please tread lightly or stay off, so we'll just stay on the rocks and just the border of the island and not go into the middle part. We'll be using power bait on egg hooks. I usually like orange power bait. I don't know if the color actually matters because it's all scent based anyway. Uh, green's what they had. So I like to put these on an egg hook. If you're too lazy to tie your own leader, there's, there's these Gamagatso pre-tides I'll use. And then I just have a uh, weight that's above the swivel. I usually have a bead stopper in there to protect the knot. And that way you can feel the bite if a fish tries to run off with it. And look at this huge shell that I found. Holy smokes. That's nuts. That's a freshwater snail shell. Or I mean, you know, we're on a freshwater island, I mean, could be a terrestrial snail shell. I look forward to looking that up, what that is. That's really cool, bud. What's a terrestrial snail shell? That means it'd live on land. So I'm not sure if that lives in the water or on land. Aquatic means underwater, terrestrial means on land. This is not a snail shell because it's too big to be one. No, I think it is. But that'd be pretty wild for it to be on this island. It's so small. Uh, and then also, that's also a huge freshwater snail shell. So that's, that's a, something fun to look for, up when we get home. Bad news on this pole, it broke off the tip here. Okay. See there, pretty major break. But I've got the solution. All right, I just uh, pinched off the, the rest there. So there's not gonna be any sensitivity on this tip, so I'll have to watch the line real close, but it'll, it'll do the job for the day at least. Oh my gosh, Russell, what did you find? Whoa, that's a quarter. Quarter. Treasure Island, they ought to call this place. All right, Russell's got one. I don't think it's too big, but it is a fish to cap off our Island Lake Mason County adventure. Oh, that's fine. That's a good looking fish. Yeah, that's a nice fish. I was wrong. Whoop. Yeah, nice job, Russell. Nice job, Russell. Yeah. All right. So although the fishing wasn't great, we did get into get into that fish. And uh, Russell, I think we'll remember this for a while, right, bud? <laughs> yeah, out here on Island Lake Island. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to taking a kid fishing, it's not always about the fish you catch. It's about the fun you have and the memories you make. And, you know... Hopefully we can all maintain that spirit through adulthood. All right. Well, thank you so much and see you next time on Washington Fish Side Quest. There you go. Fishing wasn't great, but that was a very wonderful time. Very fond memories there. Really the only reason I didn't play that one is it ended up being more of a home movie. So after that though, two, two nice things happened. One, my buddy Don, who you can follow at Grace Harbor Life on Instagram, reached out to me and gave me some good spots on the lake for different species of fish. Don't worry, Don, I won't burn them on my channel. And then uh, number two, uh, my buddy Brett over at Peeling Lime, he had been fishing in Island Lake and I left a comment on his page about going on the island. If memory serves, 
we had a, a discussion back and forth about whether that was okay or not. And about the probably sixth time one of us replied back, one of us figured out that there's actually two island lakes and they're very near each other. There's one in Poulsbull and then there's one down near Shelton. So there's two island lakes in the state and they're about an hour apart. We were fishing in different island lakes. <laughs> and I think one of them, you, like I said, you can go on the trail, you can go on the island as long as you stay on the trails and I think perhaps the other one you can't. But, you know, don't quote me on that, I'm not for sure. Well, hey, thank you so much for uh, sticking through Cutting Room Floor Theater. If you're one of about the 10 people still watching, just want to let you know we got a lot of really good things planned here at uh, Washington Fish Quest for you in 2022. I, uh, I'm going to have an announcement pretty much around the, the start of the new year. It's going to be my 10 year anniversary, so I hope you're uh, ready for a bunch of self-grandizing uh, bull dink. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot of that in 2022, but I hope to get back to more of the roots of the channel, uh, getting back to actual fish quests and that sort of thing. There was a reason I was spacing them out, and I'll reveal that in 2022. So thank you so much, and see you next time on Washington Fish Quest, and hopefully never again on Cutting Room Floor Theater.